This is Ponty Tower, an iconic apartment building based in the city of Johannesburg. If you've seen an image of the city, you've probably seen this tower before. In fact, if you were to Google Johannesburg, you'd see Ponty in almost all the images on the top search. There, 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 and there. Almost everyone that lives in the city knows of Ponty, but not all of them will have something good to say about it. And you can't blame them because this 54 floor high rise that was built for the mega rich was once taken over by gangsters and was almost turned into a prison. The area surrounding it known as Hillbrow also has a terrible reputation of drugs and crime, according to some South Africans at least. Today we'll be guided by Dlalanje, a tour company, in exploring this tower and the surrounding areas. We will also be staying one night to experience life in this historical tower and we're hoping to get a glimpse of what life is really like in Ponty today. Um, this is it. Go to be park. He says go to the gate and tell the security guard that you're here for Dlalanje. Dlalanje. Hi, good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, all right. I'm here to see Jala Nje. Jala Nje. Yeah, I'm here for the license. Uh, okay, let's go. Ponty Tower, also known as the Ponty City Apartments, was built in 1975. It is 173 meters high and still holds the record for the highest residential yeah. skyscraper in Africa. Oh, yeah. They still have cars that were left behind from the 1900s. People that abandoned the cars still chilling. This here. looks like one of them. But damn. We're trying to find the Dlalanje Center based off of these instructions that were sent to us after booking. Do not park on the road. It must be an abandoned baby. Why is it to set up a script? Right? Take something. Can't just leave it there. Want to rot? Be without nothing. This doesn't look like it. This is the way you would hijack someone. Now. If you go to P4 and then do we give him a call or what? Oh, uh, that's not a bad idea. I'm just trying to see what's on the inside, the dark areas there. What do you reckon that is? That dark. Super dark, or oh, is that the center of the of the tower? Oh, this is just the center, right? It's so dark. And you know they actually designed this thing in a circular shape so that more light will enter each apartment. Look at this though. What are we doing here again? We have to go to P7. No? Another way? This is P7. After walking around for about 10 minutes, we finally bumped into one of the tour guides. He guided us to the Dlalanje Sundowns venue on the 51st floor where we should meet our guide. What's the top floor? The top floor is 54. So, what, what happens at 54? Uh, it's not accessible to people. Not accessible. I see. It's all the generators and all the, oh. the power system oh. of uh, yeah. the water comes up. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. This is... Because our tour time was not set in stone and there was a tour group that was coming a bit later, we decided to join them at 11.30 and first go and pick up our first drone so that we can take some cool shots of Ponty. Thank you. We're at the Santan Ice Store and we're about to buy our very first DJI drone. Let's go! Look at these drones guys. So we're deciding between, between the Mavic Air 2 
and the Mavic 2 Zoom. This is the first time we're buying something from the iStore and the only reason why I'm buying it from the iStore is because the price is the same on the iStore as it is on any other drone store. We did it! We bought our first drone. Oh my goodness! Challenges as well, wait, ninja plate. The space you guys are in today is just a community center for the kids, just for the kids. We open this space for free. All the kids are there struggling with any subjects, you know, reading and stuff. This is a teacher that will help the kids with different kind of, you know, activities and stuff. And behind you guys, there's a challenger champion for at the end of the year. We select the top 40s, top 50s, we take them for vacation out of Johannesburg to show them that when you work hard, you deserve a reward. Now we're heading into the teen section. So this space was actually a shabini before they converted it into a teenage center because they found that it had a negative impact on the kids that were actually attending the first children's center right opposite. And now the space is being used to teach the teens about music, video production, graphic design, drama, and all sorts of other subjects to help uplift them, including entrepreneurship. And every Friday at Ponty, you can actually order pizza from the teenage center, which allows the kids to make a little bit of pocket money and also just allows them to practice the entrepreneurial skills they've learned from the center. Both the youth center and the teenage centers are based on the ground floor of Ponty, accessible to all the kids in the neighborhood. We don't get any funding anywhere else, we're just funding, us, funding ourselves to the experience that we do. So we do the working towards Hebrew, Yovo. Due to the safety measures and other complex reasons, more on that later, I was advised to not film bits of the trip. We headed out of the Ponty Tower and the first stop we looked at was the Ponty Tower from the outside. All the building that was built back in the 1970s, you know, the caretaker, either the people that they used to work for those white people, they were living outside. They're not allowed to live, you know, close to their bosses. So the 12th floor, it was for the servants that they used to, to live here. And that's the reason even the, the windows, it was very narrow. But right now, it's one of the top floor where everyone is going to live on because of the view. During the 1800s, Johannesburg would have never expected to be the high-rise, high-density city it is today. In fact, this was what Johannesburg looked like in the late 18 and early 1900s. But the discovery of alluvial gold in the Rands in the 1880s changed everything. Suddenly, Johannesburg went from a place inhabited by a couple of farmers to producing 40% of the world's gold output by 1914. The South African government then started shifting their focus from agriculture to industrial investments. But due to the shift, lots of men and women that were working in the agriculture industry, especially in the rural areas, were forced to move out and find job opportunities elsewhere. And naturally, they followed the money to Johannesburg. So this little city that once consisted of over 3,000 diggers suddenly exploded into a population of over 300,000 residents by 1914, all within 40 years. And from then, it just kept getting bigger and bigger, making the Johannesburg we know today. Welcome to our first outside building. Like Go say, please, no pictures of this building yeah. or that house. Yeah. The so, this is an example of an abandoned house and a high jump building. So, that house is called the Zemlin House. It has been like this for the longest time. Uh, it was hijacked all the way back in the late 80s. Believe it or not, people staying in there are still paying rent to the first guy who is responsible for hijacking that house in the first place. People prefer to go for these circumstances because it's affordable. It doesn't require you anything as long as you are able to pay that particular rent at the end of the month. Unlike content, they will require the right documentation, a letter from your from your employer, a two months banking statement to prove that you can afford rent. And the reason we urge you guys not to take pictures of these two buildings mm -hmm. is because we don't want to turn our toes into poverty pond, making money out of the bad situation. Yeah. It's funny how you see change from one street to the other. Yeah. You feel like yeah. you're in a completely different neighborhood yeah. or in a completely different area yeah. just of how people take care of their environment. Yeah. The 
Nubar tour was really interesting and gave us a good insight of the surroundings of the Ponte Tower. We learned about the security systems of the area as well as the community's form of justice. Here, the community, together with the Itema company, they came up with a street alarm called Vimba. So Vimba is a Zulu way it means catch him. So right now here, if somebody stole your cell phone, you know, and the community found him out, they found out. If you scream Vimba, the community will run after him, they'll catch him, they'll beat him up up to death. That's a form of justice in the area. We got a glimpse of the offline country. Majority of people, for them to advertise anything, they use the gum. So that's why we create an offline version of gum tree. So the gum tree is all about accommodation. Because in Johannesburg, it's becoming quite hard to find a place to stay. Every African, they want to come and live in Johannesburg. That's where they can get connected. We walked past a water polo training ground that was turned into a brothel. <laughs> People do not, back in the days, this was a hotel and a sports center. They had a statues there, squash, a swimming pool, and a running track. Yeah. Believe, underneath the summit yeah. camp is actually used to be an Olympic sized swimming pool, which used to belong to the water polo uh, Olympic club. But unfortunately, the owner of it passed away and left everything to his nephew. His nephew immediately turned it into an adult entertainment center. And we even got to taste some street food. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, come. Okay, let's do this. What is it? Just this. Come on, let's have another one. Two. Yeah. Yeah, it's two. Hard. Chewy. So good, though. Let's go, love. Then we headed back to Ponte Tower for the tour we've all been looking forward to. Um, it was one of the very first vertical urban slums in, in Africa, but it opened up its doors in 1976 as like a very posh, super posh building. Um, and when you get down into the core, you'll find this crazy, crazy design of the place, right? Hollowed out building. And some people say it has to do with the amount of LSD the architects were having at the time. Um, but it actually has to do with the law which stated you needed to have a, a source of light and air, a window, uh, in both your kitchen and your bathroom. So in terms of design, um, this was the best space that they, they could get. We've just arrived in the center of the Ponte Tower. Oh my God, this looks so incredible. Uh, the area that you just walked through was very diverse and cosmopolitan in the 70s, um, but it was very white. During the 1900s, South Africa was actually governed by an apartheid government, a government that wished to create racial segregation and to ensure that South Africa was dominated politically, socially and economically by the nation's minority white population. Because of this, there were areas that were designated to different races, and Huba was one of those areas that was designated predominantly to the white people. But by the 1970s, as more people around the world, especially Europe, started pouring into South Africa, Huba became more cosmopolitan and more nightclubs were formed that allowed interracial mingling. And what started in the nightclubs often ended up at the apartments like Ponte. By the mid 80s, the apartheid government was uh, tired of sending people and asking them you know, why are there black people staying here? And the common response being like, no, that's not my partner. That's uh, my butler or that's my maid. Um, we're not living together, we're not a couple. So they decided to redline Kilbra. Basically means that the economic taps were switched off to the area and there's no money coming in for infrastructure development or services or anything like that. Very quickly, Ponty went from this luxurious lifestyle apartment to a building known for drugs and prostitution controlled by the gangsters. The prostitution industry was just on the first two floors, the 11 and 12. That was just prostitute industry back in the days. Those two floors, you could nobody was staying in there. It was like a, a full market of prostitutes at that time. Yeah. That snowball got to a crazy pace and by 2002, this building was declared a vertical urban slum. So a vertical urban slum means there was no water, there was no electricity, 
this three bedroom, uh, three story apartment, it only cost 400 rand a month to stay in, right? Which maybe in today's money is like 2,000 rand. But if you didn't have uh, electricity or water, well, there's no elevators, right? So you have to walk down 50 flights of stairs every day. And with no electricity, people just tossed their waste out of the windows into the core. So by 2009, when new management came in, they not only found garbage, but even remains of people in the core. You could only imagine what happened when a drug deal went wrong. Because as you can see, our first floor, it's a small parking. They couldn't fit a truck or any big uh, vehicle to clear out the trash. So, so they were forced to hire people to take it out the old manual labor by hand and it took them a period of two and a half years to clear all of this trash here. And we since have moved from being a slum in 2002 into being one of the people called a Hollywood scene. Back in 2015, we were visited by Drake. Drake came here to shoot a small video called Please Forgive Me. And some of the movies to be shot down here, it's a movie called Chappie. Even a robot, a big problem for me. A thinking robot could yeah, And the last movie to be shot down here, it's a 2016 movie, a zombie movie, Resident Evil, the final chapter. Alice! We're at the barricade! Claire, you have to hold him there. So now we're on the 52nd floor of Ponty. The 53rd and 54th floor were actually designed for servants back in the day. So that's why they have completely closed down that area. No one can rent it. Um, no one can purchase those properties, I think. So the highest floor you can stay on is the 52nd floor, which we were fortunate enough to be able to rent for one night. So let us show you into our home for the next few hours. So as we come in, we have this extremely spacious lounge and then a very spacious kitchen as well, fully equipped with microwave, uh, your fridge, your uh, freezer, dryer, washer. So if you want to come here for a long stay, that's definitely possible. So as you come down the lounge area, there is one little bedroom on this side, which has two single beds. So if you have family or if you have friends or kids, you can accommodate them in this room. And also this room has very spacious closet space and a small bathroom as well which just has your normal amenities normal bathroom amenities and also a very big shower okay now let's go and take a look at the master bedroom welcome to the master bedroom we have a lovely queen size bed that will be able to fit all three of us and as you walk further in you see this extremely huge and extremely expansive closet space <laughs> that's literally like if you are a clothing person these cars this kind of space is enough for like I think like five people or something and then we walk into one of the bathrooms it's also a small bathroom but it has your basic amenities so there's a bath so the best part of this whole accommodation is definitely the view that you can see like kilometers and kilometers away of the whole of Johannesburg So we just came back from getting some dinner. So we thought we'd sit down and just hash through what has happened in the day because there's just been so much that has happened. We have so many perspectives. We have, we, we've just learned so much. We've taken so much in. So we're gonna have our dinner and also just do like a, what do you call it? Like a, like a day dump. <laughs> we went to Kauai and we're having the- No bull. Yes. No bull burger. And then we're also having a Thai curry. Yeah, looks absolutely divine. Let's dig into it. What was your first impression of the building when you first came here? The tour guide also mentioned today. It's true that all you hear is negative things about this building. Like your parents don't say good things when you read the news. It's never good things because that's all you hear about it. And you have this stigma and you have this like preconceived idea. So when you look at it and you're driving in and you're in the parking lot, it doesn't feel safe, it doesn't feel good. But I'm, I'm really grateful for that because now you're in a new experience. And because you're in a new experience, 
you're like, this is really where the juice of life can come in, where you're completely aware and you're completely vigilant for new, a new experience basically, and so it was pretty cool. So what are your impressions of Ponte now, after experiencing not only Hillbrow through the eyes of the guide as well as the Ponte Tower? It's what happens really around Hillbrow where from one block there are abandoned buildings that you, that you get taken to go see and then hijacked buildings where people are going there illegally to stay and then after that you go like two blocks down and it's completely safe and there's like really well built, well maintained buildings, literally two blocks from one another. So to label the whole area dangerous or the whole area, you know, like a drugs paradise brothel run hillbrow is not really accurate. Humans are multifaceted. Like you, you can't judge a book by its cover, basically looking at something and saying, this is what it is just because of our preconceptions and our backgrounds can be very flawed and can cause huge um, problems in society. It's good for us to come here to challenge our understanding as well as challenge other people's understanding and open our ability to be more empathetic. Empathetic, yeah. Our ability to be more empathetic of different people and their uh, situations and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see what it's like in Ponte at night. Come join me. I'll see you just now. Oh wait, I need the keys. I forgot. So if you're wondering what Ponte Tower is like in the evenings, it seems like from what we've seen, uh, you can hear kids talking, families just spending time together. You could see the lights of everyone's little light from their little apartment. And yeah, it seems very much what you would expect from an apartment building. Living here, and how did you come to live in Ponte? 37 uh, 38 years. 38. Since 1982. Was this your first place, Lou? Mm -mm. You didn't need to pay for a sleepover. Oh, but you have now, to pay? Now we pay for a visitor, for anyone to come. Like my partner stays in the Northwest. So every time he comes, we have to pay 50 rand a night. That's like a hotel for you. Almost. Yeah. But you're paying rent and everything. We're paying yeah. rent, we buy our own electricity, we pay for everything. Well, I think so. Do you want to double check? Oh, I want to double check. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Are you drinking coffee? Oh. 
Look how many millis they. How many? Milli. This is like. Dropped on the floor. Hey, okay. she's here. Uh. Pretty fancy cupboard. Very cool knob situation. Yes. What happened? I'm going to drop it on the floor again. Okay. Is that... <laughs> so... Come on, let's turn off the TV.